raise your voice and declare declaring the end from the beginning it is my service of restoration whatever I have lost before I met Christ today is my day of restoration whatever I have lost even after I have met Christ today is my day of restoration I thought you are behaving like your father God he always declares the end from the beginning what are you leaving this service with this morning oh Jesus I thank you thank you because you are set to bring about restoration for me I give you the praise and I give you the glory blessed be your name mighty father in the name of Jesus the Christ thank you father father we are here before your feet I ask to speak to every soul let not one person leave this Sabbath the same way they came. And let your name alone be glorified. In the name of Jesus Christ. Your hands together for Jesus and please be seated. What a joy and privilege for me to be here this morning. And I want to appreciate God's servant, our state pastor, our resident pastor. Probably the privilege given to me to bring God's word in this second service. And I believe God. If you want to clap, you can clap for Jesus. That the you that came here is not the same you that will live here. In the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you very much, sir. We have been looking at the subject, understanding how God leads. And this is part 4B. Understanding how God leads. Let's be reminded that the prophetic focus for the month is the Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. We can never ever overemphasize the need for divine guidance. The scripture says the labor of the foolish wearies everyone because he knoweth not how. Life becomes an uphill task when you don't understand the how of things. The understanding of the know-how is what separates you from the crowd. The understanding of the know-how takes away sweat and struggles from life. And I believe God that as we go through this short teaching this morning, somebody here, the days of your sweating and struggling are finally over. Yeah. In Psalm chapter 23, verse 1, let's start from there. That the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. I would like to read from other translations of the scriptures that verse. In the NIRV version, New International Revised Version, he said, the Lord is my shepherd. I have everything I want. When God is guiding you, you have everything. Say me, I have everything. The GNT version of the scriptures said, the Lord is my shepherd. He gives me everything I need. The CEB, Common English Bible Version says, The Lord is my shepherd. I lack nothing. The God's Word translation says, The Lord is my shepherd. I am never in need. If you can, please, can you stretch your right hand toward this altar? I pray today, the God of this commission will lay hold of your hands yeah. and lead you from today. Yeah. And by that leading, everything that makes for life and godliness will never be lacking in your life. Yeah. Whatever it is that you have lacked before coming for this service, 
Because God is leading you from today. You are going to have everything you need. You will not just have everything you need. You will have it in abundance. And your enemies shall be helplessly helpless to stop your blessings. If you receive that shout, it's stronger. Amen. Amen. The Lord is my shepherd. I have everything I need. So it doesn't matter where you are right now. It doesn't matter your state or your condition. He said he found him in the desert. He found him in the holy wilderness. He was struggling for survival. This is chapter 32, verse 10 to verse 13. But God found him. God is finding somebody here today. He said he led him about. God will begin to lead you from today. Yeah. I'm reading from Deuteronomy chapter 32 from verse 10 to verse 13. And he led him about and instructed him. When God is leading, he will be instructing you. The grace to receive instruction this morning, may you receive it today. Yeah. He instructed him and kept him. When God is leading you, he will keep you. Somebody here, because God is leading you, you shall be kept. And eventually, verse 13, he said, he made him to ride upon the high places of the heart. So, it is the leadings of God that brings about the makings of man. He led him and made him not to be trekking on the heart. He led him to be riding. Somebody's days of trekking is finally over. Men in this church will be bringing jets to this church. <laughs> He was riding on the high places. He left the wilderness. He left the backside of life. He left the obscurity realm of life. He came into limelight because God led him. That same God who has led this commission, that same God will lead somebody here. Yeah. But for that to happen, there is a positioning that is required. There is an alignment he said, I will stand upon my watch. I will watch to see what he will say. God is always speaking, but men are not always hearing. But from today, every form of spiritual deafness and blindness, I command them to be healed. Yeah. And the foundation for divine guidance is to be spiritual. That has been said, but we can never emphasize it. Because in 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 14, he said, the nature of man, the nature of man cannot receive. Cannot receive. Just like a man cannot be pregnant. You can be born again, but if you are natural, if you are not spiritual, you, you can be coming to church, you will not receive. Cannot receive the things of the spirit. Cannot receive guidance. So, we have to be spiritual. We have to come on that platform. That even when you come to church, you have to be spiritual to hear from God. God will speak to somebody here. I said, somebody here will hear the voice of God. Or oh, if you are down, shout a stronger, amen. amen. So there's a position here. Quickly, we look at a few positions this morning. We help powerfully in the first service. We must create a serene and quiet environment. Say me, a serene and quiet environment. You know, the Bible says, study to be quiet. Practice quietness. Atmosphere is everything. The environment, the time is everything. God will speak through a still small voice. Not in a noisy place. But those who are not in the habit of maintaining quietness on the inside. Because you can be quiet on the outside and be rowdy on the inside. Because the God that wants to speak to us, we speak from your inside. So, you have to maintain serenity on the inside. We find that in 1 Kings chapter 19, verse 11 and verse 12. I pray for somebody here, whatever is causing crisis and upheaval, inside of anyone, I command them to be silenced. Oh, if you are there, shout a stronger amen. amen. Quietness, quietness, quietness. He said, a man that seeketh wisdom will separate himself. Jesus will always separate himself. 
Mark chapter 1, verse 35. He said, a great while before money, he will go out in a quiet place to hear from God. He said, money by money, it causes my ear to hear. Every morning from now, you'll be hearing the voice of God. But he went out, he separated himself. So, he may not need to go out of your house, he may be inside your house. But have a solitary place. He said he went into a solitary place. Have a place of time alone with God. If you can practice that, the next four weeks, watch it. God will begin to guide you that you will never lack any good thing in this life. If that's your story, shout a stronger amen. amen. We heard all of that powerfully in the first service. Now, in this service, God, you have to position yourself through the ministry of teaching priests. Say me through the ministry of teaching priests. Or oh, if you are sure, shout it better right now. Second Chronicles chapter 15 and verse 3. He said, For a long time, Israel has been without the true God and without a teaching priest and without law. But when they in their trouble, so when you are without God or without a teaching priest, you enter into troubles. So, but today, no matter the troubles you have entered to before, there will be quietness for you. There will be peace for you. He said, they in their trouble. But God, through the teaching priest, guided them into all round rest. So, the teaching priest, who are available every time we come for church services, is one of God's channel of guiding his people. You come to church, you are not just hearing the preacher's voice, you are hearing the voice behind the preacher's voice, the voice of the Spirit. The Spirit of God interpreting what is being said from the altar for your own unique, customized, personalized way. Let me illustrate with an example. Many years ago, before I, I left school, a young man started working. I joined the commission in 1991. I finished my professional exams and all of that. And uh, I came to church. So that time I was ready for marriage. So I, I was blessed by the <laughs> testimony of our pastor in the first service. So I started eyeing some sisters to talk to for marriage. So I have a practice that time of I have a company of friends who will go and stay by the entrance of the church. So that as they are coming in, we are checking them. <laughs> because I won't marry in the market, I won't marry in the disco. I will marry where I'm trying to give some chronic bachelors here at school right now. So we'll stay outside there and be checking them as they are coming in. So one time, I came for a youth meeting, thinking in my own mind that when I come there, youth meeting, that was my first time that time, that in a singles meeting, they would tell us how to get who to marry, because that's what I was looking for. The God of Mr. Wedeku came and said, today, I want to teach you about purpose and family life. I can never forget he said, purposeless men are dangerous men. He said, if any man don't have a purpose for living, you are not fit to live. He said, single sisters here, hear me. If any man comes to meet you and say he wants to marry you, ask him, what is your purpose for living? He said, if he doesn't know, don't answer me. I said, wow. Bishop, I spoil you. <laughs> because that time, I started hiring a particular sister to talk to and they took every word of Bishop Oedeko, that time in Lagos, as if God has spoken. So if I go and meet any sister now, if you ask me, what's your purpose? <laughs> My purpose is just make money and enjoy life. <laughs> so she would have given me a 20 inch nail. And God spoke to me through that word. That it's time to discover your purpose. So that set me on inquiry to find out why am I here. The voice of God sounded through my teaching priest. 
It was that voice that made me to say, I want to come for Bible school. I've been in church for three years plus that time. I've never gone to Bible school because of my schedule in office. I came to Bible school in the course of that, Pastor Ezekiel was teaching. And I heard him say, you shall be among them that build the walls of Zion. So I went to a meet after the service. Excuse me, where is the verse of that scripture you said? He said, I never said like that. I went to the Bible desk. If you check your account now, you have internet and all of that. You say, I, I say, I cite the scripture. There's nothing like that. But I hear that voice that you shall be among them that builds the words of Simon. It was the Holy Ghost interpreting the words of the teaching priest of that day to meet my specific need of direction. So from that time, I started perceiving God is calling me to ministry. So, and I love what you said. So many things were said. That God, you don't determine how God leads you. From that point, eventually I was at home, knowing that I'm going to ministry, ready for ministry. I was still working as a settled accountant. And um, I was in my house, reading the book towards excellence in life and ministry. The book of my teaching priest. And that life on tape or through books. As I was reading that book, Faith Connection. I read the line, and suddenly, I saw a vision. I have never seen a vision before in my life. And I saw a woman. I looked at it. I said, what is this? I was angry. I closed my book. And it was a Sabbath day. I came to church. So, I came to church, left my Bible, and to go and meet my friends at the gate to go and do an assignment. <laughs> now, it was like this. In the Lagos church, it was like that time. I don't flow. And I read you over there. As I moved out of the church, the same picture I saw in my house, I saw sitting down. I did like this. Am I in a trance? My heart was beating very fast. I wanted to turn away. And I heard a voice. There's no fear in love. Are you not the one asking for marriage? Who to marry? That means, young man, hear me. If you are going to love somebody, you will not be afraid of the person. Even if God will tell you no, she won't kill you. And they will not stamp the no on your forehead. So I adjusted my suit and uh, I said, excuse me, what's your name? I, I won't tell you all the details. <laughs> Amen? But that day, I couldn't tell her that I want to marry to be stupidity, stupidity. And I couldn't tell her I saw a vision. You don't need to tell any woman that I saw a vision. So long story short, eventually, I spoke with her. I'd like to marry you and all of that stuff, on the spot. And I told her, I want to join the ministry. I'll be resigning my job. She said, the answer is no. Ah! I was so angry. You mean I can talk to somebody and say no? <laughs> I left her. I went to talk to another sister in the church. Even though God has showed me a vision. But she said no. I left her. I went to meet another sister. We started and all of that. Her name was Tosin in the church. Then... Um, her parents were still in London. She was to go and see her parents. So I saw up to the park. As I turned from the park, I heard a voice. You're about to marry a Thai girl. What? So I went to the house of where she was staying. And um, staying with a mature couple. And those couple now said, and I've told them that I want to join the ministry. They said, in the morning of that day, the man and the woman, they are afraid that if I am sincere with God, that God will not allow me to marry her. She was coming to church, but she was living a double life. That that in Lawrence church was going to meet her parents. It's a man friend she was going to bring. Coming to church. Serving in the church. God delivered me. I removed my shoe to my father's house. <laughs> now, she was working in my bank. As of that time, I started saving money with him. Thinking that we're going to marry together. Ask me, where's my money? I said, I'll call it out tomorrow. Young man, don't give your money before you marry me. So, after that, I, had, I saw another sister. I spoke to her in the morning. I like her. She said, okay. She will pray about it. I went home to sleep. I lost my peace. Throughout that night, I couldn't sleep. I knew God is not there. I said, sister, the following day, that thing I told you, please forget it. <laughs> no, no, we are talking about divine guidance. Because one of the areas you can make the greatest mistake of your life is the choice of who you marry. Somebody said, 50% of your failure 
has been established if you marry wrongly. 50% of your success has been guaranteed if you marry correctly. So, eventually I was tired. I was already addicted to church. I was tired. Talked to this one. It didn't work. Talked to that one. I said, God, I'm ready for ministry. Because I said, Lord, I want to marry before I join the ministry. God said, I will show you. <laughs> so, eventually, I joined the ministry. I was sent to Delta State to be able to go and plant a church. December 1996, I had a, a call. No, there was no call. There was a message. There was no telephone that time much. That uh, somebody wants to see me in Lagos. I said, well, when I come for Christmas break? Now, the person I, that gave me 20 inches nail that I saw vision was the one looking for me in Lagos. Hallelujah. That was more than 18 months from the first time I spoke with her. So I got to Lagos. You know that I'm already a pastor now. So I went to see her in the house. I put my hand in my pocket. You know I say pastor now. They say, excuse me. Excuse me. I understand you are asking after me. Hope there's no problem. And he said, there's uh, something I want to discuss with you. And you know, you said something. I pretended as if I don't know. What did I say? <laughs> <laughs> he said something about marriage. I said, yes, what happened to marriage? Long story short, that's my wife today. That's my wife today. So God can guide you through several methods, but don't insist, just as we are told in the morning. He can show you a vision. I didn't demand for vision. I have never seen a vision before in my life prior to that time. I never knew there's no fear in love in the Bible. But when you have been reading, God will take out of what you are reading when it is needed to prompt it and stir it up to guide you. So when you come to church, the teaching priest, when your heart is open and you are spiritual and your heart is connected to your teaching priest, because the heart of man answers to man. That's why you have to receive your teaching priest for you to enjoy the fullness of the ministry has brought to you. You don't disregard. You don't ignore. They are God's agents of guidance. So he said, therefore, honor them, obey them, submit yourself to them. For that will not be profitable if you do it otherwise. The grace to do all of that, receive it today. And I have to say this also, very important, because some people take time to, to receive their teaching priest. I have passed the church where three years, four years, and I say, ah, I just after three years, I started connecting. Meanwhile, somebody connected for the first day. So every time you come to church, there is a voice of guidance from the altar. But you have to connect your heart to receive it. Somebody here shall be guided. Yeah. Number two, very quickly, number two, uh, position that we must occupy is through joy and rejoicing. Say me joy and rejoicing. Can you say it stronger right now? Joy. Isaiah chapter 30, verse 29 and verse 30. If you want to hear the voice of God, you have to maintain an atmosphere of praise. He said, you shall have the song as in the night when the holy sentence is kept and gladness of heart. Verse 30 he said, then, what will happen? And the Lord shall cause his glorious voice to be heard. Verse 30 is a product of verse 29. Verse 30 is an outcome of verse 29. And the Lord shall cause his glorious voice. That is, God must hear your voice of singing if you want to hear his voice of direction. It is your voice that initiates his voice. Your own voice of singing is what primes God to speak. So every time you are sad, you are depressed, you bow down your head, you are missing guidance. You shall have a song. So wake up with a song on a daily basis. I will sing of the mercies of the Lord forever. I will sing. Oh, what a mercy. The steadfast love of my God never sees His mercies never come to an end. Hallelujah. They are new every morning, always new every morning. Great is your faith. 
My daughter, don't go to that place today. This is where you should go. This is where you should invest your money. It will give you inside information. Nobody here will misinvest his energy again. Amen. You will never misinvest your resources. Amen. You will never send your children to the wrong school. Amen. You will never move to a wrong house. Amen. Every day we are taking decisions. Every day we are taking steps. And every step you take on a daily basis is either helping you or hurting you. It's either taking you closer to your destiny or further for your destiny. That's why every day must be singing day. Every day must be what? You don't have to be in the choir to know how to sing. God is not interested in the content, what do you call it now? Either soprano or tenor or auto. No. Just sing to him anyhow. He said, as they minister to the Lord, the Holy Ghost said, Acts chapter 13, verse 2, the grace to minister to the Lord on a daily basis, may you receive it today. Amen. Oh, if you are receiving a shout, a stronger amen. amen. Psalm chapter 16, verse 11. He said, in thy presence is fullness of joy. He said, thou will show me the path of life in your presence, and you can never gain access to his presence without singing. He said, enter into his gates with thanksgiving. And it was caused with praise. He said, be thankful unto him. And do what? Then you have access. He will show you the path of life. The path of abundance life. The path of enviable life. Somebody here, you shall be envied. Amen. The grace to sing on a daily basis. Receive it today. Amen. Every plan of the enemy to bring about depression, I command them to be destroyed. Amen. What are the proofs of being led by the Spirit? Very quickly, we have powerfully in the first service, supernatural insight. Say me supernatural insight. The word insight is a compound word. Inside sight. Insight plus sight. You have insight information. When God is giving you, he will give you insight in the economic or corporate, or they call it uh, uh, inside trading. <laughs> you know when the stock will crash, you will sell off. You know when to rise. You do what? Insight. Uncommon depth. When God is guiding you. He said, I am the Lord that teacheth thee. That teacheth thee. God can't teach you and remain a dollar. Insight. Strange insight. You not just know what to do. You know how to go about it. If you can, please stretch your hands here. Father, I pray for everyone under the sound of my voice. That supernatural insight by your leadings becomes every one portion. Amen. If you receive that shout, a stronger amen. amen. And that is crucial because every door is easy to open when there's somebody helping you to open it from the inside. You don't need to struggle. There's an inside information. So God will give you inside information. The biggest jobs in life are not the ones they advertise. You don't become a member or a board, a director in any company by advertisement. No. Someone said that person is very valuable to this board. So the inside information, you will like, you will never lack people like that that will give you that information. Amen. May you receive that grace today. Amen. That's number one. Number two, very quickly, liberty of the spirit. Say me, liberty of the spirit. Second Corinthians chapter 3, verse 17. Wherever the spirit of the Lord is leading, there's liberty. There's liberty. Anytime you want to take a step and you feel bound in the spirit, you don't feel a release. Particularly if your spirit is healthy. I have to put that word there. If you're what? Acts chapter 20, verse 20 to 23. Apostle Paul said, I go bound in the spirit. You don't have a release. They may be pressing you, go and pay the money, make this investment. Tell them, I don't have a release yet. Your spirit feels gauged. That is why we need to cultivate a healthy spirit man. 
If your spirit man is malnourished and quashokored, it cannot pick that signal. That will take time to feed your spirit man with the word of God and in prayers. You can never overemphasize the place of spirituality in hearing God. Your spirit man needs to be healthy. He said, I go bound. I know this journey is not better. My stubbornness wants me to go. And he suffered for it. So don't play with your spirit man. Liberty of the spirit. You never like that again in Jesus' name. I tell you, one of the graces I enjoy is that one last minute to take a wrong step, God steps in for me. One last minute to take a wrong step, God always steps in for me. I will have been out of ministry today. Why were Madagascar? Madagascar is an island that to buy a land is like I buy a human being. The cost of land is so, so expensive. So we have to buy a property for our church, close to a million dollars that time there, and they sent us money from headquarters and all of that. And um, a member of the church who traveled came back and was asking me, who was not aware? I said, well, we're about to pay for that land now. He said, okay, excuse me, have you checked whether there's no nearby church to where we are buying? I said, excuse me, well, there's a church. In fact, the church of the president of that island is close to less than 50 meters because there's a law in that country. Any church is not permitted to stay 100 meters of another church. That's their law. The new church has to, for, has to be forfeited. So I said, there's a church there. I will now call the lawyer because they already pay our staff, our, my ARP and our church officials are already in the vendor's place. They are given the man three checks. I picked the call. I called him. I said, find out from the lawyer. I said, it's not away. I said, okay, until you are sure, collect our check back. The following day, we went to the Ministry of Interior. They saw the law. If we have bought that land and we forfeit it, I'll be my ability today. That same grace that didn't allow me to marry a tiger, that I'm enjoying heaven or not in my marriage. Set your hands if you can. That same grace I release upon somebody here today. One more minute to take a step of regret, God will step in for you. So God is in the business of guiding his children. And by that guidance, somebody here will enjoy restoration. I said, somebody here will enjoy restoration. In 1 Samuel chapter 30, verse 1 to 3, we are familiar with the story. The Amalekites invaded Israel and took away the women, their sons, their daughters, and everything. And verse 8, and David inquired of the Lord, shall I pursue? And God said, pursue. You shall recover all. By this covenant day of restoration, whatever you have lost, there shall be total, complete restoration. Amen. Somebody's health shall be restored here. Amen. I said somebody's joy shall be restored here. Amen. In the name of Jesus the Christ. If you are there, shout a stronger amen. amen. So we are serving the God of restoration. He said, I will restore. I will restore. That's what God said. I will restore. The same yesterday, today, and forever. Somebody lost a job for 20 years and came for a service like this and received the word of restoration and was called back and was paid 20 years' salary at once. Say, I received that dimension. I pray today for somebody. That testimony shall become pregnant for you. It doesn't matter what you have lost and for how many years. In the next several days, there shall be visible restoration for you. It doesn't now, now, now. Let me say this: You know, when you are working on your computer, and you mistakenly you press a key, and you permanently delete what you have been working upon, perhaps hours of work, perhaps weeks of effort, and you don't know what you just pointed delete, <laughs> it's gone. But with our God, nothing is impossible. But also know the computer also have what they call undo. Say me undo. There's an undo function. He said, I will undo all that afflict you. <laughs> Today, somebody here, God will press the undo button for you. Yeah. Whatever has been stolen from you, 
or whatever you have lost by your errors, by your mistakes, or by your sins. Today, God will press the undo button for you. All your efforts that the enemy thought is lost. I said, God will press the reverse button today. God will press restoration button for you today. He said, I will restore the years. It will restore what? So God is not just restoring things. It will restore years. I said, it will restore years. Now, please be seated. What do you mean by restore years? Perhaps in a certain area of life, you have lost ground. Your mates have overtaken you. He said, I will restore the years. I will restore the year. That means one week can be like 10 years. I will restore the years. Perhaps your mates are already married. And it appears as if you are left behind. Perhaps your mates have graduated in school and you are still in school. Perhaps your, your mates have children already, yet you are still believing God. I have good news for you. I said the God of restoration will restore the years. I prophesy to somebody here. I said the next seven weeks, they shall be like seven years. The next seven weeks will be like seven years. God will restore your years. God will restore your joy. God will restore your peace. <laughs> so God is a restorer. But very quickly, how do you assess your restoration? Very quickly, number one, we have powerfully in the first service, give your life to Christ. You must become a child of God if you want to be restored. Give your life to Christ. That's the first step. And number two, in case you have given your life to Christ and you are sinning, return back to God. Return back to God. That's number two. Return back to God. Confess your sins. Repent of your sins. Luke chapter 15, verse 20 23. The prodigal son returned back home. He was eating with pigs before, but his glory, his color was restored. Because every child of God is ordained to radiate the glory of God. He said, God, by his divine power, has given us all things. Say me all things. All things that makes for life and godliness. Who has called us to what? To glory and virtue. To glory and virtue. To glory and virtue. And the purpose of restoration is to return something to the original owner. That's restoration. Original owner or original place. Glory is your portion. I say honor is your portion. Yeah. So whatever is contrary to glory and honor, every force behind it, I command the to here today. Yeah. So restore back. Return back to the original condition. So return back to God. Say I'm returning back to God. I'm not hearing somebody right now. The loudest we are right now. Return back to God. Return back to God. For instance, now, somebody's wondering what is all this solution about. When God created man, he said everything was very good. Was what? Genesis chapter 1. So, whatever is less than very good, an enemy has done it. Either an enemy or carelessness that has made something to happen. But today, Somebody shall be restored back to very good. Yeah. What will happen to your health? What will happen to your marriage? What will happen to your children? What will happen to your business? Very Use your mouth to write your ticket. I said, what will happen to your life from now? Very good. Very good. So, return back to the original state. Or, restoration means return back to standard. Jesus, we are... Joint heirs with him. We are what? That means whatever Jesus does not suffer, and you are not seeing it, and you are suffering it, that means it's missing. Wisdom, strength, riches, glory, power, all of that. So for everyone in this church today, whatever is contrary to glory, heaven is returning back to you. Yeah. Marital glory shall be restored. Yeah. Business glory shall be restored. So return back to God. Number three, very quickly. Commit yourself to serving God in a season of revival. 
Commit yourself to serving God in the season of revival. As a church, as a ministry, we are in our season of revival. Now, we have to understand the season in which we are in. When a fruit is in season, you don't struggle to get that fruit. When the fruit is out of season, you pay more to get that fruit. And the season of revival, there are characteristics of it. One of them is restoration. Shame restoration. Season of revival is the season where God drafts multitudes into his house. He said, in the last days, the mountain of the lost house shall be established on the top of the mountains. And all nations shall flow into it. That's a revival. That's a revival. He said, the Lord thy God in the midst of thee is mighty. Mighty to do what? To save. Massive salvation of souls. That's a revival. 7 chapter 3, verse 17 to 20. He said, in that time, I will undo all. I will reverse. I will press the undo button. I will undo all. I will undermine your enemies. That is, nothing they do against you will work out. Oh, I thought you were receiving that. <laughs> so, it's a season in which we must commit ourselves to serving God. Serving God in prayers. It will bring about your restoration. Job 42 verse 10. Job prayed for his friends. And God turned his captivity. And the Lord gave to Job twice as much as he had. So, season of revival is season of praying for others. Don't ever come for any service without praying for that service. He got twice because he was committed in serving God. In prayers. Serving God in fasting. And God restored him. Somebody here shall be restored. Amen. Serving God in reaching out to souls. Serving God in investing your energy, your time, and your resources. And we have been serving this church. So you are entitled to restoration. See me, I'm entitled to restoration. Can you say it strongly right now? I am entitled to restoration. Open restoration. Now hear this. When God restores, he restores to annoy your enemies. God restores with interest. And even when your enemies refuse to let go, he said, restore or I will kill you. Genesis chapter 20, verse 7 and 8. They took the wife of the servant of God, Abraham. And God appeared to Abimelech. He said, restore that man's wife or what will happen? Or you shall surely die. Hear me this morning. Everyone holding in custody that will belongs to you. In seven days, they either restore or they are dead. I speak as a saint partaker with the undertaker. That I say whatever belongs to you that people are sitting upon. I command instant restoration. Amen. Please get seated. Somebody took one of one child from our church in Fitabaraku. I was in Lagos that time. One of the twins. I was there. I was going to attend to the parents. For two years, we were looking for them. And God said, we say, God sent me that this child will be back. For two years, they were looking for this child. Eventually, the angel of the commission appeared with a sword to demand that to the child. He said, go and return that child. You're going to die. The man, I, I was there. Not that they told me. I was there. He restored the child. And the man died. So everyone who have refused to let go what belongs to you, in seven days' time, I declare them dead. Your miracle jobs are released today. Your promotions are restored today. He said, restore. Or they die. It's a new day for somebody here. Amen. And finally, number four, or number what now? Demand for your restoration. James chapter four, verse two. You have been serving God. You are entitled to restoration. He said, you have not because you ask not. I am entitled to restoration. So in a short while, we're going to be praying. Whatever is contrary to very good, my spiritual life, 
my academic life, my marital life, my finances, my children, my in-laws. Please don't be selfish this morning. Don't just focus on yourself. Everyone connected to you, you can bring them here. Whatever is contrary to very good is over. There will be restoration of very good. Very good in every department of life. May you receive that grace today. Amen. Your hands together for Jesus right now. Give my Jesus a big shout of praise. Amen.